Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue the discussion on the turbine and uh, what we are in the middle of the discussion is that we have talked about the axial flow turbine and uh, how the stage dynamics of a turbine that actually um, works and what are the different uh, design related parameters and how one look at the different part of the turbine. And then towards the end of the last lecture, we are talking about one of the important aspect of the turbine blade, which is called the um, cooling. Now, just to remind or rather recall the situation that turbine blades are very, very important component of any gas turbine design. If you think about the whole system uh, of an aircraft engine, it starts with your all intake fan and whatever uh, diffuser and then it comes to the compressor and then compressor it goes to combustor and then from combustor to turbine and then finally it passed through the nozzle. I mean if it is an uh, civilian aircraft engine, if it is an aircraft engine which is used for the military application that time you also use the after burner into the system. Now, having said that, if you look at what compressor does, actually compressor actually increases the pressure. So, you get proper pressure rise before the air enters into the combustion chamber and also you decelerate the flow. So, that you avoid sort of an uh, unsteadiness or any irregularities in the combustion chamber because that kind of situation may lead to the flame blow up or some sort of an instability or unsteadiness inside the combustion chamber, which is absolutely undesirable. Uh, so, uh, and also that can lead to some sort of an pressure loss across the combustion chamber. Now, after that point of time, the uh, hot gas which comes out of the combustion chamber is actually passed through the turbine. And that is the component which plays a key role in a gas turbine unit which produces the actual power. So, the whole design if you think about it which I repeatedly keep on emphasizing is that it is one particular parameter which controls the design towards the upstream and also towards the downstream is the inlet temperature of the turbine. Why? Because the turbine inlet temperature is a parameter which is uh, after the combustion chamber the hot gases reaches to certain temperature, but it cannot be any untolerable or accept acceptable or allowable limit because every turbine blades are made up with some materials okay. and we will see um, uh, even in today's lecture what are those materials and all these. So, it has certain limitation like every material has certain melting point, certain limitation. So, uh, turbine inlet temperature actually it creates that uh, situation where if you go beyond certain acceptable limit, these uh, blades or the turbine blades that can melt or that can break. So, this will obviously restrict your uh, point or the range of operation. So, one would like to have more and more temperature which pass through the turbine because if you have more temperature then due to the expansion process in turbine you can actually extract a huge amount of thrust. So, that is probably one would expect to have, uh, but at the same time one as a designer one has to keep in mind that the blade has certain limits. So, one should not cross that limits if that happens that fails. And once the turbine blade fails that means essentially not only it is not going to contribute any thrust production also at the same time the whole unit or the system is going to break down. So, now there are different 
ways to I mean people have been trying to use some uh, high temperature material which can withstand high temperature. Uh, I mean obviously, it has reached certain limit the development, but still we are limited with certain materialistic properties. Now, second point all these blades because of these hot gases they are also exposed to high thermal stresses or thermal loading and top of that the blades especially the rotor blades they are uh, uh, attached to the uh, rotating sap I mean the disc and the disc actually rotates. So, uh, there is a huge thermal uh, loading or thermal stress which uh, gets developed and that can also lead to the failure of this blade not only that that sometimes the disc also fail. So, turbine disc is another important um, component. Now, what usually people do just to enhance the limit of operation which I already talked about that using some sort of an if we can uh, reduce the blade temperature to some extent and that is where the cooling becomes very very important. And for aircraft application primarily we do air cooling because already as I mentioned we avoid any liquid cooling there are certain uh, disadvantages with the liquid cooling. So, liquid cooling is not preferred in aircraft application. So, we go by the air cooling and what it does by doing the air cooling actually it increases the limit and if you go back this is where we were in the discussion and just quickly I uh, touched upon the points that different air cooling strategies, but we will close down those things today uh, with proper uh, detailing. So, what it does that when you do this cooling or the blades which are cooled due to the cooling of actually your temperature operational limit can be enhanced by 400 Kelvin up to up to 400 500 Kelvin. So, that is the effectiveness one can see um, due to this cooling because cooling can literally enhance the operational limit by certain margin and that allows lot of flexibility for the designer to design not only the turbine blade um, at the same time the other components which can operate. Now, as we looked upon these are the different um, air cooling strategies that one can uh, adapt. So, some sort of an um, convection cooling, then one can have impingement cooling. So, we will draw proper picture today, I mean try to draw some pictures and give you an idea how things happen and also uh, do some comparison. So, let us uh, go one at a time, I mean like uh, if I extend uh, this picture itself, uh, this is where the air comes through the hot gas comes through or pass through this surface and uh, these are the passages through which the if you think about these are the passages where the cooling air actually pass through. So, this is a typical mode of convection cooling strategy and when the hot air passes through the surface. So, the cooling air which uh, passes through the hall or the slot that cools down the thing. Now, this form of cooling is achieved by designing this cooling air which is passing through this turbine blade or vein and it can extract out the heat out of the upper surface. Usually, the air flow through these uh, slots are radial and also these are made in multiple passes and they are from hub to tip in the I am talking about in the airfoil or turbine blade. So, this is a schematic how the principle of operation is, but in the turbine blade this is how it works. So, they are these uh, things are taken care of and uh, this goes from hub to tip and this uh, multiple passes are used and this multiple passes actually allows to have efficient cooling. Now, the other one is the sort of an impingement cooling which uh, we can draw a picture 
let us say we have an upper plate like this where the hot gas will pass through. So, let us draw the upper plate properly so that you get an idea. So, this is the upper plate and then you can have some sort of an cooling hole like this, then some sort of an cooling hole like this, then, uh, then it goes like that, you have hole like that, you have hole like that, uh, so something like that. So, this if you try to draw some 3D aspect of it, so this is how it looks. So, that is how goes like that and so these are the surfaces. So, one can Now, you can see through which the these are the things and there are holes which are there it just like a design is like that. So, this passes through like this and these are the distance let us say and this could be the height of that in the height and uh, probably this could be the diameter of the hole and this is where the hot gas pass through. Okay. So, this is your impingement kind of cooling. So, what it happens? So, this is high intensity form of convection cooling because if you see the top uh, surface where the hot gases is passing in the bottom there is the impingement. So, the cooling air is essentially blasted on the inner surface of this aerofoil I mean if, if I think about an aerofoil surface by high velocity jets. So, these are the jets coming in with high velocity which impinges on the uh, back surface or the lower surface of these blades and permitting an increased amount of heat to be transferred from that upper side to the lower side. This cooling method can be restricted to desired section of the aerofoil to maintain even temperature over the entire surface. For instance, the leading edge of the blade needs to be cooled more than the mid chord of the section or the trailing edge. So, this one can use it. Then you have a standard approach of flame cooling strategy where you can uh, have it uh, easily. So, that is how the slot is, the slot could be rectangular, this could be Now, this is the slot where things comes, this is the cooling gas it called flim. So, that is the surface here the hot gas comes in. Now, this is another standard uh, strategy. So, the air is actually passed through the slots and then it uh, mixes with the hot gas. 
So, this is injected through the blade holes on the blade surface. So, these are the blade surface where the um, uh, slots could be there where it comes out and it mixes with the hot gas and due to the mixing with the hot gas obviously the temperature comes down. So, that is the strategy what one uses for uh, flame cooling. Now, then another one could be your full coverage film. So, that one can design like this. So, you can have uh, like a slot like this. So, here the slots are on So, so through which, so there are full multiple holes are there on the surface and this is where it is injected, this is where the hot gas comes in this is called full coverage flame. So, here if as you see the whole surface is actually fully covered with different slotted holes. So, obviously, when it mixes with I mean the when the cooling air is pass through these multiple holes and it mixes with the hot gas, there would be efficient mixing and it will reduce the things. Or the other one which we could have is the transpiration. So, that is like it goes like this, you have a surface like that. So, this goes like that. So, this is the hot gas comes in and transpiration cooling is a method requires the coolant flow pass through the porous wall. So, these are the sort of uh, one can think about these are porous walls I mean the surface and through which it pass through and the heat transfer is directly between the coolant and the hot gas. So, this covers the entire range. Now, if you look at a some sort of an plot which give you an idea about let us say this is uh, percentage percent cooling air flow which is m dot a. So, this goes let us say 1, 2, 3, 4. So, these are some schematic and this goes two, four, six. So, this is effectiveness of the flame cooling which is a function of hot gas, cooling gas. So, that is the ratio. So, the different kind of curves one can obtain. So, this can go like uh, simple radial flow, then this could be no flame. like that. So, this is simple radial flow. So, this is leading edge impeachment or no film. Now, this will have multi pass this is 
some sort of an cross flow impeachment and this could be uh, transpiration. So, just give you an idea how this improves the different aspect of the blades. So, these are obviously is going to improve the sustainability or resistance of the blade material up to higher range of temperature and that allows to operate in a different range. Now, just to quickly wrap up the things. So, there are certain uh, guidelines for uh, axial turbine design. So, these are some of the recommended practices which are uh, in axial turbine designs. One is the inlet Mach number. Okay. So, what it does to minimize the losses in upstream ducting and assure the gas acceleration in NGV. So, what have M1 first stage should be less than 0.2 and M1 next stages should be higher than M1 of the first stage. So, this is uh, typically what is uh, sort of um, kind of consider while doing the design. Two is the rotor blade inlet hub relative Mach number. Okay. So, this also to ensure the acceleration relative to the rotor and avoid any possible separation at the rotor inlet, then one can have a condition M W 2 at hub should be somewhere 0 0.7 and alpha 2 would be in a range of 65 to 73 degree. Again, these are some of the recommended setting for design, but this is not all. Third is the stage expansion ratio. So, this is important. So, stage expansion for the highest efficiency for highest efficiency this expansion ratio should be in order of 2 is to 1 and 3 is to 1. The per stage this is expansion year per stage. So, the highest expansion ratio from a single stage turbine it could be somewhere 4 point um, 4.5 is to 1. Okay. Fourth the flow coefficient which is phi. So, the flow coefficient versus stage loading for different efficiencies already been seen that how it works. So, from there one can choose then half to tip ratio. So, here half to tip ratio is important just to minimize the secondary losses and uh, losses due to tip clearance, the half to tip ratio should be in the range of xi 0.85 to 0.5. 6 that is aspect ratio which is A r. Then the aspect ratio is uh, based on the axial chord. So, let us say should be range of 2.5 to 3.5. Now, for uh, LPT it can be little large or aspect ratio can go up to 6. 
so that is a low pressure turbine which we can do. Then you have axial gap which is G. Now, this is to avoid the blade vibration difficulties. So, this would be somewhere approximately 25 times into upstream axial cord. So, just to avoid those things. Okay. Now, already so just here this flow coefficient one can see a quick uh, chart on the side like for flow coefficient there is a variation this is again a qualitative plot it is not something so it starts from 4 so it goes like up to 1.4 this is phi which is Vz by u and this side is psi which is delta h naught by u square stage loading coefficient. So, this starts from 0.6 it goes somewhere as again 3. So, the curve should be just qualitatively they look like this. So, from this you can estimate this thing during design. Now, degree of reaction. So, for best efficiency this should be around 0.5, but if the blade temperature is uh, borderline with respect to the creep or oxidation, uh, then uh, this guy can be 0.3 or an half this could be always greater than 0.2. Now, blade tip speed which is u tip. Now, for high temperature turbine that is HPT uh, there is huge distress. So, that limits this u tip to roughly 400 meter per second. For last stage or towards the LPT you can u tip should be around 350 per meter per second because uh, HPT there is a huge disc stresses. So, then final stage exit Mach number. So, just to avoid any background in flow in turbine downstream diffusing duct which is exhaust or jet nozzle pipe whatever the final stage Mach number should be in the some range and that is 0.32 somewhere 0.55. And then final stage exit swell angle. So, exit swell angle. So, that is again to minimize the downstream duct pressure loss the exit swell angle should be in the range of 5 to 20 degree. So, these are some of the design parameters or the numbers which are recommended and one can use those things. Now, that the last component which we have also talked in details for uh, compressor also for turbine there is a map and uh, this is also generated through detailed experimentation or some sort of in computational analysis to see the under all of design condition. Uh, so, this can have an uh, the expansion ratio or the pressure ratio whatever you call it that is let us say P not inlet to P not exit. So, depends on the station number. So, this can be plotted versus non dimensional mass flow rate like m dot t naught 1 by p naught i, or this could be m dot, I mean, that is a theta i, theta naught i, 
by delta naught i and that is for, for different rotational split which is n by root t naught 1 uh, or n by root theta naught i. So, this uh, turbine map can be drawn with respect to design condition. So, that these parameters will be corrected mass flow rate and then if you plot this uh, like this let us say 70, 80, 90, 100, 100 train this side is your percentage uh, design corrected speed which is m dot root t naught 1 by p naught i divided by m dot root t naught i by so this is i p naught i so this could be i not 1 sorry so this is design so this is how the speed is corrected and this side it can go 1 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 and this is the expansion ratio which is P naught i by P naught e. So, the typical curves which start uh, for example, let us say from here it comes like this and then it will have different speed. So, these are the increasing n by root t naught 1. So, let us say 80, 90, 100, 110. So, then you get this for varying speed you get this expansion ratio and the design corrected speed. So, additionally isentropic efficiency can be plotted. So, for each speed line as we have uh, talked about that it can get you the compressor uh, operating regime with the maximum allowable mass flow rate etcetera. So, because um, also in this case choking occurs in the NGV. Okay. So, this is what uh, we wanted to discuss about pretty much on uh, axial flow turbine. We will stop here and continue the other discussion in the next lecture.